Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Mark chapter 1. We're going to be starting verse 14 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we get into verse 14 here, actually, verses 14 and 15 deal with Jesus begins his Galilean ministry, all right? Jesus begins his ministry in the area of Galilee. Now, let's read verses 14 and 15, and it says, Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So he says here in verse 14, the first part says, now after that, John was put in prison. Now he mentions it here, but actually in Mark chapter six is where Mark goes into more detail concerning uh, John uh, being, John the Baptist being put into prison. And we'll deal with that when we get there, all right? But he says, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into, into Galilee preaching the gospel, all right? So it says he came into Galilee. Now, there are several possible reasons why Jesus left the region of Judea at this time and went into Galilee. Remember, John the Baptist, he was baptizing uh at the Jordan River, but it was the Jordan River, the south part, near, a, almost like a cross, even with Jerusalem, all right? Again, Jerusalem was about 20 miles away from the Jordan River, but uh, John was down at the southern part of the River uh, river of Jordan, and now Jesus is, is going to be leaving that area of Judea and going back up north up into Galilee. And there's several reasons that's believed why he went up there. And the first is this, because of John's imprisonment. Now, to reject John and his message was to reject Jesus and his message. Both John and Jesus preached repentance and the coming of God's kingdom. And if John's message was rejected, then Jesus's message would also be rejected and he would possibly be imprisoned by Herod also. Now, another reason why Jesus may have gone to Galilee is in Luke chapter four, verses, verse 14. And it says that Jesus was controlled by the Holy Spirit and he went into Galilee. So the second reason is because the Holy Spirit, as when the ha, when Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit, what? Drives him into the wilderness. So also the Holy Spirit would have motivated Jesus to go up to Galilee. But there's a third reason why Jesus may have gone up into Galilee is seen in John chapter four, verses one through three. And it says here, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize, but the disciples did, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. So the Pharisees were possibly threatened by Jesus' success and may have physically announced their desire, I'm sorry, publicly announced their desire to get rid of Jesus. So Jesus withdraws from their presence and goes to Galilee. Now on that note, Jesus has the ability, you have to understand, Jesus has the ability to call down an army of angels at his command. Therefore, I don't think that Jesus went into Galilee out of fear of the Pharisees. It seems more likely 
that it was just time for Jesus to go to the region of Galilee, to go up there. Not that he, you know, he's not telling his disciples, we got to get out of here. The Pharisees are after us, right? No, he, he, he went up into Galilee. It was just his time to go there. So they went. So it says here, Jesus came into Galilee and he was preaching. Now, the Greek word for preaching is keruso, and it means to proclaim as a herald. So Jesus was, was heralding. He was preaching. And what was he preaching? The gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, many of the authoritative manuscripts and texts do not have the words of the kingdom. They don't, they don't include the words of the kingdom. So therefore, it should read the gospel of God. All right. So when it says here that Jesus came into Galilee and he was preaching the gospel of God, that's what he was preaching, the gospel of God, the good news of God. Now, so the text should read that Jesus came into Galilee heralding the good news that comes from God, the good news that comes from God. And this is what we do today. We testify of good news. The best news, the best news to this world. And this news is from God. Don't you, listen, <laughs> don't you and I have the best news in the world? It's eternal news. The news that we have extends into eternity. The news that we have isn't just for this life. It's for the, it's mainly for the next life. News that can, news that we, that we can, that we can be saved out of this present sinful world, saved from bondage of, to sin and be received and be received into heaven forevermore, right? This is what good, good news is. And so each, as Jesus went into Galilee and he preached the, the, the good news from the good news from God. So also we have the same message. We preach the same thing. Jesus preached the good news that the Messiah is here. The Messiah has changed our life. He shed his blood and paid for our sins that if we put our trust in him, we can be saved. We don't have to be in bondage to sin anymore, but we can be saved and we can have a home in heaven forevermore. John 14, one through three, right? A mansion in heaven. What was this good news that Jesus heralded? And we see it in verse 15. So it says Jesus came into Galilee and he was heralding, he was preaching the good news of God. And what was that good news? Verse 15 saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the good news. So he says the time is fulfilled. Time here is kairos, kairos. And it means a definite or a fixed time. Jesus was announcing that the fixed time for the end of the dispensation of the law had come. Jesus is saying, let me say that again, that he was announcing that the fixed time for the end of the dispensation of the law has come. It's time for the law to be finished. That's what he's saying. The time of the, the time of the law is now ending and the time of the good news of grace has come. The old is being replaced by the new. The old law is being passed away. The new law, the new law of God through grace, through mercy, through righteous, imputed righteousness. Uh, through through faith in Christ, that has come. So he says, the time is fulfilled. 
The kingdom of God is at hand. Now, the kingdom of God on this, I don't want to spend a lot of time going into the difference differences of the phrases of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. If they refer to the same thing or if they refer to different things or not, I know you could probably go online or get books and you see what, what you know, this, this is the kingdom of God and this is the kingdom of heaven. And this is, you can, I've heard, I've had lessons on that before also, but I, so I don't want to go into that at all. But I want to focus, I want to focus on what the kingdom of God is and its importance to the Jewish thought. Because Jesus is saying, what? He's saying the kingdom of God is at hand. And who is he speaking to? Speaking to Jewish people. So we have to re we have to understand this in the Jewish mind. How would the Jews be receiving this? And how it applies to how it applies to Christians today. Now, dealing with the kingdom of God, when studying the kingdom of God, we must realize that it does not, the kingdom of God does not refer to a specific place or to a specific time, but it refers to God's rulership acknowledged by mankind. Let me say that again, because... This goes against our natural teaching. If you've learned, you've been a Christian for a while, this might go against what you've been taught. So it says, when we study the kingdom of God, it does not refer, the kingdom of God does not refer to a specific place or to a specific time period, but it refers to God's rulership acknowledged by man's kind by mankind the kingdom of god was the absolute basis of the old testament when we understand the design of god to set up a kingdom on earth then you understand the making of the children of israel into a nation and their mission why God gave them ordinances, civil laws, religious laws, moral laws, and institutions. It was the setting up of God's kingdom through the children of Israel that reveals the difference between Israel and all the nations of the world. So God in the Old Testament, when he called Abraham, he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. From you, from you, Abraham. And God was, God was going to use the nation of Israel as a spectacle to the world to, to, to set up his kingdom. And he was going to use the children of Israel, the, the nation of Israel, as his, as his kingdom, the kingdom, to bring in uh, rulership of the world. He was going to use the nation of Israel as that kingdom. Now, the whole Old Testament was supposed to be a preparation in order to present the coming king, the Messiah, as the, as the ruler of the world. But even his own, even his own people did not receive him which God already knew would happen. God knew that that he, he was he wanted to make he wanted to make the nation of Israel to be his representative kingdom to this world. And God would eventually send the send the leader, the, the king, the Messiah, to rule over his nation, the nation of Israel. All right? But God knew that that they would reject him. The announcement the announcement that the kingdom of God was at hand was enough to rouse the excitement of any Jewish heart in Israel. They, were, they looked for a Messiah, for a king who would bring in God's rule through the nation of Israel to the world. That's what it was all designed for. They were looking, let me say that again. 
they looked, they looked for a Messiah, for a king who would bring in God's rule through the nation of Israel to the world. And that's what it, that's what it should have been. But they rejected the king that God sent to them. God sent, God sent the king, Jesus Christ. It was, in a sense, it was God himself. <laughs> it was God himself coming to rule, to rule over the nation of Israel and over the world. But they rejected him. This rejection of the king set up the ultimate kingdom of God. That he would, I'm sorry, this rejection of the king set up the ultimate kingdom of God that he would that he would set up and his kingdom would not be with outward show but it would but it will be without but it will be I'm sorry it will be within us all right so in Luke chapter 17 verse 20 they because they rejected the king then the outward kingdom was would not be revealed but Jesus said, the kingdom is within you. The kingdom is going to be within you. All right. Yes, a temporal earthly kingdom of God will be set up on earth during the millennial reign from which Jesus will reign from Jerusalem. But this is only, this is only temporal. It's only going to be for a thousand years, the millennial reign, right? The eternal, the eternal reign, the eternal one begins in the human heart and it continues into the new Jerusalem and into the new heaven and the new earth. So there was to be an earthly kingdom, but the Jews rejected the king that was sent. So now there will be, there will come a time when the earthly kingdom of the nation of Israel will be set up, but that'll be during the millennial reign, and it's only going to be the thousand years. But Jesus said, let's let's turn to Luke, Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. And let's read that. Luke 17, verse 20. Because the Jews were looking for the Jews were looking for a king that would deliver them out of the hand, the oppression of the Romans. Right, and to set up a kingdom on the earth. That's what they've been looking for through the whole Old Testament. They've been looking for this king to come that would deliver them from all their oppressors and set up, set up the kingdom uh, in Jerusalem and, and to reign on the earth. And Jesus says in Luke 17, verse 20, and when, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, when will this kingdom come? Jesus, tell us. When is this kingdom coming? We want to know, right? Jesus answered them and said, the kingdom, of, the kingdom comes not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo, here and lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Not going to come with signs and wonders. Here it is. There it is. No, the kingdom of God is within you. And this is the way it is in the, each Christian's heart. The, the kingdom of God is within us and it stays within us until we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Right. We've been. It's like <laughs> we're stamped, stamped in our forehead by the Holy Spirit. And, and we're sealed until the day of redemption. And the kingdom of God, when the Holy Spirit lives within us, the kingdom of God lives and reigns within us until we, until we leave this body and go to be with the Father forevermore. Now, I know this is, this is a very brief scratching of the surface on the subject of the kingdom of God, but we need a basic understanding of what the kingdom of God is in order to understand why it was important for Jesus to say that the kingdom of God is at hand. God's true kingdom exists today in the heart of every believer. 
who humbles themselves to God's rulership and obeys God's word, right? So he says here, the king preaching the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel, right? Repent and believe the gospel. John the Baptist's message was repent and be baptized for the remission of sins with a preparation for the coming of the Messiah. But Jesus's message was repent and believe the gospel. Believe the good news that the Messiah has come. So John's, John's message of repentance was different than Jesus's message of repentance. John's message was a repent and, and because the kingdom of the kingdom of God is at hand, right? The kingdom of God, uh, the, the, the Messiah is coming. And then, and, and Jesus is saying, repent and believe the good news that the Messiah is here, that grace has come, right? John chapter one, John chapter one. It, it's in my head, but I have to see it here, right? For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth is here now. It's here. And uh, repent and believe the gospel. And that's that's what we, that's what, it's for every one of us today. Every person believing in the world today. Repent and believe the gospel. For every unsaved person, repent, turn from your sins and believe in Jesus Christ. That, that God has sent Christ into the world. He sent our Savior into the world. All right? Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.